so I'm Markus Müller. Um, I'm leading the data science team at um, Up42. Um, now, now, now I should actually ask if you can see my screen, right? That's the traditional question that you, that you ask uh, before you start your presentation. But unfortunately, I cannot ask you because I can't hear any responses anymore. Um, so I just uh, go with the assumption that you can see my screen. Um, so what I want to talk about is um, the fusion of AIS and uh, ship detection. So uh, the whole idea is uh, that we want to look for dark vessels. Uh, that, that's like to make the whole topic a little bit more interesting. And I will I will explain in a second what, what I mean, uh, what dark vessels mean and, and what's happening here. But um, just as a as an early start, um, Up42 is providing a platform for access to geospatial data and processing. I think that's that's the core idea that, they have, that I have to uh, describe here. And um, so if you want to do it, want to uh, explain it in very simple words, we are having a cool API to do geospatial processing, right? And on top of this cool AI, AOI, um, uh, API, we developed something that we call the Python SDK, the Python uh, Software Development Kit. And um, this Python Software Development Kit can be used in a, a Jupyter Notebook. And that's what I will do in the next 10 minutes. I will walk you through a Jupyter Notebook where I combine our Up42 Python SDK together with some uh, standard data science tool that uh, I guess uh, everybody is familiar with nowadays. Um, so we're talking about pandas and uh, matplotlib and uh, things like that. Um, first of all, the context. What's the thing with dark vessels and, and why do I want to talk about it? So, you know, now everybody knows what AIS is and you already saw the cool presentation uh, from Exact Earth about, about their AIS data. And we also have access to this AIS data on our platform. Now, um, all ships above a person, uh, a certain size, are uh, obligated to regularly send IIS signals out so they can be tracked, right? Um, but from time to time, it so happens uh, that a ship does not send out uh, uh, such a signal. And um, quite often there are good reasons for that. Uh, you know, a, a transponder may be broken, there might be more some, uh, somewhere for a long time. But, but something, there is something um, fishy going on. Um, so there are sometimes more sinister reasons why vessels turn off their AIS transponders. Uh, for example, we could talk, be talking about illegal fishing, right? So not surprisingly, there are quite a few organizations uh, in this world which are interested in finding these dark vessels. And uh, using uh, geospatial analytics, uh, you can do that. And the whole idea is that we identify ships with an algorithm which analyzes satellite images. Uh, so this is an algorithm provided by Airbus. It's uh, using computer vision and uh, deep learning to find ships on spot satellite images. And then we fuse this information with AIS signals. So if we can find an AIS signal for each of the ships detected, you know, all is good. We identify them. But if we can detect ships and we cannot find a corresponding AIS signal, then something sinister might be going on. Or put it in more, more neutral words, this is candidate for being a dark vessel. Um, so that set the, sets the context. And um, now I will walk you through my Jupyter notebook. What I will do here is um, I will get spot satellite imagery for a given AOI. Or to be more precise, I want to show off a little bit. I will um, process in parallel two AOIs to show you parallelization. Uh, then I will have to do a little bit of uh, geospatial magic. I need to uh, do format conversion, coordinate reference system conversion. I need to uh, tile the image because the ship detection block only wants small images. Um, and then I will, at the end, apply ship detection, ship identification. And at the very end of uh, my, my presentation here, I will visualize the results. Um, small disclaimer, this is kind of a, a live presentation, but not really. So this uh, Jupyter notebook that you see here, uh, you can find on our website. And um, I guarantee that it works, but it will not run through all the 
the commands right now because it would take uh, too long. Later on, there's the processing step, and it takes about 15 minutes. So uh, you know, my time would be up by the uh, before it would be finished. What you see here in the in the first block is um, I do various imports. Um, so first of all, I own up for to Python SDK, but the rest is a pretty standard data science and geospatial tools. We're talking about GeoPandas, Matplotlib, Rasterio. If you're working with Python and uh, geospatial data, I'm sure you know these tools. And then as the first step, I configure my areas of interest. So um, I'm interested in two areas. Um, one of the ports is uh, Surabaya in um, Indonesia, in Java, and the other is uh, the most classic area to do geospatial analysis on ships, which is uh, Gibraltar. So these are my two AOIs, uh, the coordinates. And the first step would then be I need to find an image, right? Um, if I want to detect uh, ships in images, I need uh, some images. And that's what we are doing with um, the catalog search. Uh, that's essentially a metadata search function. So um, I, I iterate over my AOIs, and I have all these parameters here. And I go quickly here now. So these are the results for Surabaya. Apparently, for, for the time that I'm interested in and the area that I'm interested in, I found three images here. So Surabaya is in the bottom left part uh, of the image. Um, all of the three images look pretty okay. So my area is inside this area. Um, so the quick looks are cover much larger areas than what I'm actually interested in, but it's in there. Now next, uh, these are images from Gibraltar, and I think you can uh, identify where Gibraltar is. It's quite an iconic um, shape here. So yeah, I found two images. But overall, I only want to process one image of each of the AOIs. So I manually already set these two image IDs. So I chose for each of the AOIs one image. The next step would be I want to run my ship identification workflow on these two images. For this, I have to do some up for the uh, um, initialization. So I need to log in so that the system knows who I am and I need to initialize a project. Um, here I create a workflow and I call this workflow ship identification download because it uses download data uh, that I later will use for visualization. And then I basically, I get all the, the processing uh, blocks as we call them. So we put uh, data sets and processing algorithms in, into something called a block. And I can put these, um, these blocks in a, in a sequence. Um, so my first block is one atlas spot display, which means I will fetch um, spot images. And uh, to be more precise, display images. It's not reflectance. It's um, something that works with computer vision pretty well, display products. I need to do some format conversion, uh, like from DIMAP to GeoTIFF. Need to convert uh, the coordinate reference system, do my tiling, then ship detection, then identify my ships. And in the end, I have this workflow. And once I identified my workflow, I can run these jobs in parallel. So if I scroll a little bit further down, you will see here two sets of parameters. You see all the parameters which are needed for each of the blocks. So the spot display block here shows again the image ID that I want and the bounding box that I'm interested in. And then the parameters for all these other processing steps. And now I simply execute this command here. And that's the command that I cannot execute because it would take too long. Uh, and I can run these jobs in parallel. In theory, I can run many more jobs in parallel. But for the time being, I will work with these two AOIs. And the whole process, you can see it here. I started it at 9.07. And I finished at 9.22. So overall, uh, to run this uh, workflow in parallel, it took uh, 15 minutes. And the next step then is to download and visualize the results. 
I will a little bit fly over over this uh, code. It's basically uh, bookkeeping and unpacking the data sets that I need uh, for visualization. Um, and I think this code is a little bit more interesting because here um, uh, you will see uh, calls to libraries that you are very likely familiar with. So first of all, I now have two images and two result sets. So I iterate over those. Then I open the image with uh, Rasterio. And then I do stuff with matplotlib. So if you are a data scientist, I'm pretty sure you know uh, all the syntax that matplotlib uh, uses with the subplots and so on. Um, then there's a geodata frame, which is a special version of a data frame, just with coordinates. Um, and I add my, my ships there and so on and so on. And what I'm also doing here in this line, I um, exclude ships without a vessel, na vessel name. So those ships, which I did not find an AIS signal for, will get displayed in a different color than the ones that I could identify. And that's what you can see then here in this first image, that's Surabaya. Um, all the red chips are those detected by the uh, deep learning, machine learning, um, uh, ship detection algorithm. And the orange ones are those which also have an AIS signal. Um, and here you can already see there are quite a few where we didn't find an AIS signal. Uh, most likely these were too small. Um, here the example is in this regard better most of the ships that were detected were also identified by AIS. And here I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer, essentially. So um, by, no, by no way I want to imply that in Gibraltar or Surabaya there are many ships which are dark vessels. Um, so this example is uh, kind of fabricated. Uh, it's fabricated to show the principle of the analysis. Um, in theory, what you would be interested in, you would be tracking shipping routes um, outside of the ports uh, where you would look for dark vessels. So here I chose the parameters that most of the AIS, um, most of the ships were identified, but, but some are not. And as you can see here, these are mostly the smaller ones. Um, and with that, I'm already at the end of my presentation. I already um, gave my disclaimer. Uh, so if somebody from the Port Authorities of Surabaya or Gibraltar happens to be here, um, no blame. I, I believe everything is, uh, is in order in these ports. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.